everybody, it's Amber, and I'm finally back with another video. So, I don't want to get too chatty, but I did um, post on my Instagram that I would be doing a short little channel update and a little tiny bit of a life update as well. So, I'm just going to let you look at these beautiful papers here, and then we're going to go over what they are, and we're going to do a really simple tutorial. So, I just kind of wanted to talk to you about like what my plans are for my channel this spring and this year, and um, also just kind of let you know where I've been. I haven't made a video in a couple of weeks. I just wanted to thank you all so much for hanging in there with me, watching some of my previous videos, and just you know, thank you for your continued support. My husband did have a major um, open heart surgery and he is recovering very well and he's going to get back out on the golf course in a few months and back to his normal stuff. So understanding of me kind of being absent from my channel for a couple weeks. But I'm back now and I'm trying to slowly get back in the swing of things and I have a little project that I want to share and it's nothing new and that's kind of like what my channel is all about it seems to be not on purpose but I I'm such I'm so busy that I watch all these videos I get all this inspiration I think of ideas in my mind and then I can't really put them on a video until I have time so this is something that I've been wanting to do but I've been wanting to wait for a reason to do it and I was like you know what? I don't need a reason I'm just gonna do it so um I'm going to show you this tutorial later in the video, but kind of the plans for my channel this spring and summer, I'm thinking about doing a series. And yes, I know a series takes up a lot of time, it's a lot of energy, it takes a lot of work, um, but I absolutely love it and it keeps me very motivated and busy when I know I have a series, kind of like my craft fair series in the fall time that I do. So I was thinking about doing a series and starting it on my channel and I wanted to announce it here um, kind of unofficially because I'm not really a hundred percent sure what it's gonna be but I think I'm pretty sure it's gonna be based around using up your paper and I know I do a lot of videos and I kind of tell you that hey this is a project where you can use up your paper but I want to do an actual series based around using up your paper so I bought this paper pad for example this is absolutely beautiful it's called Terrace Blooms and it's by the paper studio so this is um, from Hobby Lobby and just for example you guys this paper pad has 60 sheets okay so this has 60 sheets of gorgeous, beautiful, thick, nice quality, even some of it's foiled, um, single-sided paper. I know that a lot of people have a lot of paper and they want to use it up. So people put themselves on like spending holds, they put themselves on, you know, shopping their stash type of thing. I don't want to limit myself that I can't go out and buy the new Maggie Holmes collection that I had my eye on, you know, since they announced it because I have 22 paper pads in my plastic bin in my in my craft room. I don't want to limit myself if I, you know, it's my money, I work hard for it and I want to buy and treat myself to a new collection. I don't want to be held back because of my hoard. So, it's time to get rid of it and it's time to use it. And so what I was kind of saying is yes, I like this paper, it's gorgeous. Maybe like if I made a card, I'd, you know, cut a little panel out here, and then maybe, you know, I'd cut a strip out here, and then maybe I'd punch a little thing out for a sentiment of this. I mean, that's ridiculous. You're never gonna use this entire paper pad. So what I want my series to be is kind of, kind of craft fair related, but I'm not gonna call it that. I want to do some videos where people who are looking to use the paper that they love, they don't want to just give it away, they don't want to just sell it at a, at a garage sale or donate it to a school, they want to use it because they love it. I want to give ideas to use up a bunch of paper. So, for example, today's project. I have made these policy envelopes and this is, this is what they look like. They've got a really adorable shape to them. I'll tell you the measurement. They are 
10 by five and a half. So these measure 10 by five and a half. You can put these in the mail, just put your little label here and write your address and put your you know return address label up there. Um, you can use these for Happy Mail and just stick them in a bigger package. You can use these for anything. You can use these for so many things. You can fold this up right here, cut this, glue it down, and make a little loaded pocket. You can do so many things with these policy envelopes. And they were like the easiest thing ever to make. This is the perfect paper pad to just kill the entire thing and make a bunch of policy envelopes. Just get up early, like on a Saturday or a Sunday, make your coffee, get out, you know, simple tools. All this takes is a scoreboard, scissors, and adhesive. That's all you're going to need to make these and, of course, the paper. Just kind of, you know, sprawl out, get comfortable, turn your music on, turn your YouTube on in the background, do whatever, and just spend the day using a gorgeous paper pad that you have in your stash and turn it into something else. Turn it into some beautiful policy envelopes. Save them for your craft fair. Put them in bundles. Like, this is how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten policy envelopes. Gorgeous shipping. You can ship these. Like I said, what if you, um, got, you know, some seam binding. Let me actually put my favorite one on the top here. Probably this one with the foil. And this is my seam binding stash right here. I love vintage seam binding. Anyway, so let me pull up some out here. So there's some seam binding. Or you can use twine if you don't have seam binding. Do whatever you want. But take these policy envelopes and just tie it into like a nice little cute little rustic bow bring it around and would this not be a, an adorable gift for one of your crafty friends like a pen pal gorgeous stack of policy envelopes and you can hang a little tag here and then write on the back like a list of ideas of what the person can use them for say it's not a crafter say it's like your grandma or your aunt or something you just want to send them a little happy happy meal and I just think that this is such a cute idea and it's a great way to turn a paper pad that you do not know what to do with but you absolutely love, turn it into something else. Um, so that's a great way to use up an entire paper pad. You can make 60 policy envelopes with this and this was $19.99 but of course I waited till it was 50% off so it was $10. You can make 60 policy envelopes. Um, make it in bunches of 10 that gives you six bunches you can send to your pen pals you can send as gifts you can sell at your craft fair and you just used an entire paper pad so this is one of the examples of kind of the the series that I want to do I have so much paper so I have different kinds of paper I have 12 by 12 I have 6 by 6 a little bit of it I've got project life cards that to me is paper um, I've got tons of double-sided paper. I've got paper collections. So where this is kind of like use up your stash, I want to gear it more towards use up your paper because this the paper situation in my life is out of control, but it's just I love it so much. You know the KonMari method where you know, you're supposed to get rid of it if it doesn't spark joy. Well, what do you do if it all sparks joy? <laughs> So that's kind of why I want to do this. Turn a paper pad that you love looking at, that you think is gorgeous, but you don't have any ideas for, turn it into something else. Gift it away. Keep it for yourself. Hey, if you, you have Happy Mail that you like to send out, like stickers and flat mail kind of thing, just, you know, keep these in a little stand-up thing by all your mail stuff and just grab one when you need it. And I suggest, let me go ahead and take this off, I suggest if you do that and you do want to ship it, take some of that crystal clear transparent red scotch tape. It's the red one. Um, you can get like two rolls at Dollar Tree for a dollar and just put a piece right here where this seam is and then right here and then once you fold this down and glue it 
or whatever you do um, it, to adhere it down, just stick another piece right there. That's just what I would do for shipping purposes. For anybody who wants to use up their paper, and even if you don't have a paper hoarding problem and you just want some cute ideas, stay tuned to this channel because I'm going to be totally bringing you some inspiration. Okay, so before we do get started, I wanted to show you this amazing craft mat that I'm using today. I received an email from this company, Eco Pico, I hope I pronounced that right, and they reached out to me and asked if they could send me a mat. And of course, I went to their website, which I'll show you right now, and I just fell in love with what I saw. I read about it, I read about the product, and I just fell in love. And so they sent me this gorgeous, like, I just want to call it like beach blue, but the camera's kind of making it look a little more green than it is. It's actually just a vibrant, beautiful turquoise blue. Um, they're PVC and BPA free, they're non-toxic, they're odorless, and five layers of a self-healing design for less waste. And let me tell you, these feel like butter. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but it's that really soft, buttery texture. Now, I will say that I have not used it for the self-healing part, like with a craft knife or anything, so I don't know how it works with that. And they do have an um, Instagram. So I'm going to link their website below, their Instagram, and I'm also going to link where you can purchase one of these um, below. You can purchase these on Amazon. And if I can get a coupon code, I will do that as well. Um, like I said, they're eco-friendly, non-toxic, PVC-free, self-healing cutting mats for your creativity. So again, I'm going to go ahead and link everything below for this Eco Pico company. They sent me this one, which is I think the 18 by 24 size. They also sent me like the huge two more. They sent me huge ones, which I'm so excited about because I really, when I redo my craft room, I'm really going to... Um, be needing multiple craft mats. So, I'm excited about this size. I love it. It's perfect for little projects like this. And um, again, everything will be linked below. The very first time I came across these, I was watching Creative Young Mama, and she has really fun videos. I love her channel. And she had mentioned that she found the tutorial on YouTube as well. And so the the tutorial that she used is by a channel, Serenity Creations, and so when I went over there, I realized I was already subscribed to her, and she gave um, she gave the dimensions for these envelopes. So that's kind of how I learned how to make these. So I'm going to link both of those channels below, because that's where I discovered these really fun envelopes. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and do a tutorial here on my channel, and it's really, really simple. So let's get started on the tutorial. So all you've got to do is pick out a 12 by 12 sheet. Let's pick out a really, really pretty one. And I think this one's super pretty. Okay, so we're going to use this pretty swan paper. I just love this blue. It's like a Tiffany blue with the soft blush pink. Oh my gosh. So the only thing you're going to need, the only tools you'll need is a scoring board and some scissors. So you're just going to go ahead, turn it upside down and you're gonna do some scoring. Now I can't find the little score thing that goes in here so I'm just gonna use my bone folder. This is my favorite one um, from Arteza and I'll link it below. I talked about it in my last video. I love it. So you're gonna do some scoring. The first um, thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna score at one inch. Then you're gonna go all the way down to the end here and score at 11 inches. So you can kind of see there's one inch on each side scored in. Then you're just going to turn it a quarter of the way like this. And so now your two um, score lines are here and here. And you're going to score it at three inches and then eight and a half inches. So let's just go over that one more time. You've got it in here. First thing you're going to do is score it at one Score it at 11, turn it like this, score it at 3, score it at 8.5, and, and that's all the scoring you're going to do. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you have your paper, and I don't know if it's easier to see on this side where the score lines are. 
So now you have your paper, but you can see the score lines. So what you're gonna do, and then the side is the same. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do some cutting. You want to cut out these two little rectangles and these two little rectangles. But there's just a little more to it and I wanna try to do it as easy as possible to uh, kind of show you how to cut it. So again, here's your two long score lines down the middle. Here's your two one inch score lines here and here. So you're gonna take it like this to where this is the long one inch score line. And you want to take out this little rectangle right here. But you need to take it out at an angle. So right here where the score line is, you're gonna go up a little bit and make a little triangle to meet it at that score line with your scissors. So do you see what I'm doing? Instead of cutting it just straight right here, I'm gonna take it at an angle and you're gonna eyeball this every time and you're gonna be just fine. And I'm gonna cut it to meet that middle score line right there. And if you cut it too far, who cares? It's not a big deal. Make sure you don't cut this into too big of a triangle though. Okay, so there it is. And then you're gonna turn it this way. So you think you're just gonna like cut it off now, right? And cut this little flap off. But I want you to meet it with another triangle angle like this. Okay, so you took off that panel but you did it with two angles. You did it with this triangle angle right there and then a triangle angle there. So here's the panel that you need to take off but you took a little extra there and there. So I hope you kind of understood that. So here we go, you're gonna cut this panel off but remember you're gonna take a little extra. So take this in at an angle like that. Then you're going to turn it this way and take this at an angle to meet that and cut it right off. So now you're left with this. You're going to do the exact same thing on this side. So after you do your cutting, it's going to look like this. Easy, right? So it's going to look like this. And then all you're going to do is fold on your score lines. So just take all your score lines and crease them down and then we're going to decide what the top and bottom is. See how it's coming together? It's so easy. And you're just going to take this score line and crease it down and of course this one. So then I'm just going to look at the front here and see what I want to be the top and the bottom. So it doesn't really matter because it's oriented like this way, which I kind of should have paid attention to, but that's okay. So I'll just make this my top. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold these out. So this one's underneath and this one's over. So you're just going to take adhesive right here. I'm going to use my ATG gun. So I just take like two strips and then I'll do another strip over it just so the glue stays really strong. So you just go like that and then fold that over. So that's how it looks so far. And then here's the bottom. You want to take your adhesive just on the top part of this flap. Because if you go all the way to here and then you close it, it's going to kind of close here. See where this is at an angle, like a real envelope. You don't want to obstruct that portion where there's an opening. So you're just going to do a strip on the top half. So again, I do a lot of glue and close that up. And then I just wanna burnish it down. And there is your adorable little policy envelope made out of a 12 by 12 piece of paper. I mean, how fast was that? So fast, right? And then you can fill this up with goodies and send it to a friend. Um, and then you would just, you know, seal it like this. You can even put some double-sided tape right here if you wanted to send a stack of these to your friends and so then they can just peel it off when they want to use it, close it up, and then use it for whatever they want. So I thought that project was super, super fun to use up an entire paper pad of single-sided paper. You could even use double-sided paper and then right here would just be super cute. It would be... It, look, it would look lined because it would be double sided. So these are the cute envelopes that I made. 
I'm gonna keep working it relaxes me to play with paper so I'm just gonna keep working on this paper pad and make a bunch more policy envelopes and then I think I'm gonna like put them in bunches with that seam binding like I showed you and give them to some friends or maybe save them for my craft fair this fall who knows but I think I more want to send them like a happy mail and things like that Isn't that cute? So that's how you can mail these. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. You can even do it like this, and like so you could turn it this way and then have your return address up here. I mean, you can really do anything. But just know that they probably won't be able to put this through the normal letter shoot because I really don't know the sizes. I think it has to be like nine inches by six or something to go through that so just make sure you do put enough postage on this you may have to take it up to the counter to have them weigh it and stuff like that but it is possible to mail this through the post office okay so again thank you so much for watching this chatty video and tutorial I hope that you're all having a wonderful March so far and let me know in the comments below if you like my kind of new series idea of using up your paper and so uh, everything I talked about, I'm going to link below. And I hope that you all have a wonderful week. Thanks so much again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.